the book speaking or hearing God is like all of my books in religion. They are written out of pastoral concerns. And what I found in trying to lead and teach and help people with their life in Christ was that so many people feel like there is no communication between them and God. And often they only experience it in terms of their prayers. And sometimes they will say, well, I feel like my prayers never get above the ceiling. And of course, I like to point out to them that God is below the ceiling as well as above it. Uh, and they need help with understanding that part of it. But the other side of it is they really are unable to identify God speaking to them. We want to try to deal with uh, problems that are created in the minds of people that make them have that thought that God does not speak to them. All kinds of problems. Like, who am I that he would speak to me? How could God speak to me if he's away out yonder and I'm here? Our ideas about God hurt us in prayer and in communication. And our ideas about ourselves perhaps hurt us even more. And so we have to deal with those kinds of issues. But we just want to say God speaking is the assumption of the life that God presents to us in the Bible. Listen to a couple of passages here from the Old Testament. Psalm 32. God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. See, this is a very intimate relationship of living before the face of God and God speaking and directing us. It's interesting how he follows that up in verse 9. Don't be as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding. Now, that's an important thing to notice. Um, a horse and a mule has to have a bit in their mouth or some other piece of equipment or harness that allows them to be directed, not just spoken to. And what God is bringing out here in this passage is that's not his preferred model, to have to put a bit in your mouth and something to pull you around. The preferred model is the understanding. Listen what he says. Do not be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding whose trappings include a bit and a bridle to hold them in check. God's way of addressing us is through our understanding. He speaks to us. But I want you to understand now that God's preferred way of communicating is to speak to us. Listen to these words from Isaiah 30. Although the Lord has given you bread of privation and water of oppression, he, your teacher, will no longer hide himself, but your eyes will behold your teacher, and your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it whenever you turn to the right or to the left. That's Isaiah chapter 30, verses 20 and 21. Now, I read those to you at this point because I want to emphasize that God speaking is a reality. I want to add that it is for every person who has been brought to life by Jesus Christ. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice. 
And that is another thing that we need to emphasize is you learn to know the voice of God by experience, by repetition, like you learn to know the voice of another person. These little suggestions we'll be developing more as we go along. But right now, what I want to emphasize to you is that hearing God is not just an episode. It's a life. Many people have trouble with hearing God because they don't understand that it is a part of a life of hearing God. A life that is devoted to God and to learning how to interact with Him. God normally will not run over you. That's why there's so much in the Bible about seeking. Seek the Lord. Seek His face. Seek first the kingdom of God. If with all your heart you truly seek me. Now, that didn't say, if you half-heartedly seek me. And one of the things that we have to understand is... If you want to live a life of hearing God, you have to be devoted to that. It isn't a little something on the side. See, many people make the mistake of thinking that they can sort of live their life and if they need a little help, ask God for it. But God does not cooperate with that. Now, he can do anything he wants to. And if he wants to, he can holler at you loud enough that you cannot possibly avoid. But if that happens, you probably won't know what happened. You remember the case where God spoke to Jesus and said, I approve of you. And the people standing there said, it thundered. See, you don't automatically understand what God is saying or that he is saying just because he said it. Some people make the mistake of thinking that if God ever spoke to them, they would automatically recognize it. But the picture that you get from the scriptures is no, it comes to a person who is living a certain kind of life. The person who lives in terms of the natural abilities they have and those around them only thinks of those. They don't think of anything else. The person who lives in terms of the Spirit thinks in terms of the Spirit. It's where they put their mind. Now when they put their mind there, then the Spirit interacts with them. Thinking in terms of the Spirit means my expectations are from God's action in my life. My hopes are there. And my mind is lifted to what God is doing, to what the kingdom is doing, to where Jesus is. You remember Colossians chapter 3 starts out by saying, if you've been risen with Christ, Think, set your mind on things that are above where Christ is seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on the earth. See, that's our part in hearing God, is to turn our mind towards him and to listen and to pay attention. Now, of course, it's also to take in what we've already learned from the Word of God, from followers of Christ, from the Holy Spirit, in many ways that he makes his Word present in the world. In nature, for example. God speaks in nature, Psalm 19. Words. Words are how kingdoms work. That's true today, isn't it? You elect a president. What do you elect him to do? Basically, you elect him to sign papers. 
That's words. If he didn't sign papers, he would not have any power except possibly some sort of influence. Kingdoms work by words. You remember Jesus when he wanted to take out an unfruitful fig tree. He didn't send for an axe or a saw, did he? Now, what did he do? He spoke to it. See? We are meant to live under the kingdom rule of God through the words of God that come to us and through us and from us. Words are how kingdoms are. Words are spiritual realities. It is the spiritual nature of the word that ties in with human life and with God's life. And God has appointed each of us a place where we are the light of the world to receive his word into our life, the word of the kingdom, and live with that. But he goes on in this passage, verse 18, take care how you listen. For whoever has, to him shall more be given. And whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, shall be taken away from him. Think a moment about that phrase. Take care how you listen. Now we've already said that God normally does not run over us with his word. But if we wish to be people who live hearing God, we want to, uh, to live a life of careful listening. And the gentle word of God, which we can learn to recognize, is something, if we don't listen with care, we will not hear. We will not recognize it. That's one reason why the disciplines with the spiritual life are so important, because they are ways of listening. If we do listen, we will hear. And what we have been given through the sowing of the word of the kingdom will be added much more as we go on living in the kingdom of God. But if we don't listen with care, even what we've heard might be lost. And that's a pretty serious teaching that Jesus is giving us. The Word of God comes to us in a hearing life, a life that is lived in the Spirit, with a mind turned to the Trinity. The Word of God comes, and it can fill our lives if we want it, but we have to want it. We have to seek it. <laughs>